everybody. Jeff Eccles here with We Like Drinking. I'm here in Sedalia, Colorado with David Ryan, uh, owner of Alice Ranch Winery and head winemaker. Yes. And everything else that yeah. goes along with it. Right? Bottle washer. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're here today. They're having an event with a chocolate and Syrah tasting. So Dave was kind enough to let me come up and we're going to do an interview with them and maybe tap into some of these barrels around here and see uh, what, what we've got going on. So, uh, David, when did Alice Ranch Winery get its first vintage produced? 2007. It became federally bonded and state licensed in 2007, so that was our first vintage. Okay, and how long before that had you been making wine at home, or were you? I was. Uh, probably about five or six years of trying kits and enjoying okay. it, and then buying frozen grapes, and then buying real grapes, and kind of that evolution. And, uh, I was uh, planning on retiring in about 10 years, which I did this year. I was oh. looking for that next thing to do Okay. and knew that it would take me a while to really learn the craft. And uh, so that's why we began in 2007. Interesting. Excellent. Yeah. So was it a pretty big transition going from that, that, that home kit kind of producer to that first year? 20 pounds to 5 tons is a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> So Margaret said, couldn't you start a little smaller? <laughs> so with that, that, what was the biggest shock to you with that first transitional vintage? I think how much work the crush was. Yeah. And how intense the crush was. Yeah. It was just crazy. Yeah. You yeah. hear, you know, everybody you talk to the first time they go through something like that, they're like, they have no idea. No idea. The, the, the manual and just brutal and how right. hard that work is. Because you get the grapes sourced from where? where? Book Cliff Vineyards usually and uh, Whitewater Hill sometimes. Okay. And uh, also up on the, on the Mesa, we also get some from uh, Guy Parker. Okay. Oh, nice. So these are all um, uh, Palisade kind Palisade, of areas. Yes. So uh, Grand Valley, Grand Valley. Valley. That first year you said it was twenty tons. No, it was five tons. Five tons. Okay. Yeah. And so how many uh, bottles did Three, that produce? It, we about we were about three hundred cases. Three hundred cases. Yeah. Okay. And what are you producing? We range now? between three and four, depends on the grape supply. Okay. The last two years, the Syrah grapes have really been hit hard by freeze, mm -hmm. and so we've had very small vintages. Was that? Was that early early season frost? November, yeah. And so we're gonna both really hard before the vines and got the okay. chance to uh, kind of get ready for the weather. Okay. And they were hit pretty hard. Okay. So we're hopeful this year. I think it was a relatively easy fall. We're hopeful we'll have a good spring and excellent and have another have a big harvest. 2012 was a big harvest and we have a lot of 2012s in barrel. Excellent. Awesome. That's that's good to hear. Now yeah. your Syrah, is that 100% Syrah or do you do any kind of uh, Rhone kind of varietal mix with I it? I do. Uh, I usually do about a 3 to 5% co-fermentation of Viognier. Okay, so you do it with the fermentation. With the, the fermentation. I blend it in the Northern Rhine stuff. Nice. Rhone so let me ask you this. Where can the people find you either online or in person if they wanted to visit your visit this place here? Well, go to our website, alliceranchwine.com, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be able to see all the liquor stores that we're in, and we're widely distributed in the, on the front range. Growing quite a bit, too, right? Yes, and, and we're growing, growing quite a bit. From yeah. a couple of years ago, it was That's pretty right. tight to find you, and, and yeah. now I'm seeing a lot more places, which is yes. nice. Bennett Hug has been helping me get it out, and he's he is my uh, inspiration on sales, so he's doing a great job uh, getting the wine out Excellent. into the liquor store market. Excellent. And uh, anything else you want to let the people know about Alice Ranch? Well, we are open for tours and tastings for groups of eight or ten or more. Because we're small, yep. I can't have like regular hours. Yep. So if you go on the website, you can reach me through the website. Um, we're also at aliceranchwine at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And we can set up a tour. And we, we do barrel tastings. You taste our entire lineup. Yep. Hear the story. One of the new, neat things about our winery is we're in a, we're in a 1910 Sears catalog house, <laughs> That's right. and, uh, and it's on a beautiful setting on an 800 acre, acre historic ranch. And so the tastings here in a 1910 Sears catalog house are pretty phenomenal experiences. Yes, they really are. I've, 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 I've come up here to do yep. uh, the tasting. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you're really looking to spend some time with a winemaker in their environment, it's a great way because you're with eight to 10 people. Uh, usually an hour, a little bit more than that that, that that they do, and it's it's a lot of fun, and it's always fun barrel tasting, and especially if you're in the Colorado Springs, Denver area, 
this is, it's just down the street for you, so it's no problem to get to. Uh, well, I think, um, I'm getting a little thirsty. Okay, would you like to try some barrels? What do you think we, uh, let's, let's get into some of these barrels and see Sure, so this is our 2012 vintage. We're okay. very excited about this because we upped our barrel program quite a bit. Okay. So we have Francois Ferrer uh, French barrels. We have uh, four new barrels, two of which are um, heavy toast. Okay. And we also have a Hungarian barrel and a heavy toast. Interesting. And we wanted to try the Hungarian because it adds just a different uh, spice component okay. to things, which is a lot of fun. More so, like a cooking spice? or is it Yeah, it's, I almost think it's it's just another spice level. Okay. And almost cardamony. Nice. Like something that's very exotic. Excellent. Which is fun. Yeah. And then blending that with the French and the neutral barrels, so we have that fruit forward of a Syrah still. Yep. I think we're going to have a really exciting... Uh, 2012. Excellent. So you have American oak, French oak, and Hungarian oak. Yes. Um, all their own barrels? Or yes. Okay. Um, I am using a couple of hybrids, which are uh, French heads and American staves. Okay. Those are basically neutral at this point. Okay. Um, all right. Excellent. That's that's exciting. I'm interested to, to get into yeah. that. Okay. All right. Okay. So we took a little break there just to get glasses and get all the equipment we needed. So, so now, David, what are we getting into here? What's this one? So we're going to start with a a French oak barrel that's neutral at this point. Okay. It's purchased in 2007, been okay. through three different vintages, and at this point the barrel is not imparting a lot of uh, oak characteristic, right. but, it, but what it is nice to do is it allows that, that fruit, that Syrah fruit to come forward. Yep. So it's always important to have some neutral components uh, as, as part of the mix, because that's what really allows our uh, our fruit to come forward. Nice. Oh, it's got a real, uh, there's a nice herbaceousness about it. Yeah, yeah. And so these have been in barrel now two years. I think that's another unique thing about us is that we kind of use the, the more European style of letting Syrah be in a barrel for two years. Yeah. We try to extract everything we can out of the, out of the Syrah when we're fermenting. Cold soaks, extended maceration. Yeah. We want a big Syrah so that it can sit and really gain the, uh, the oak enhancements. Yep. And so you pick a little of that. Yep. Even this is neutral. It's it still a bit of that French sweetness. At yep. the end. And on the tail end, you kind of pick that up a little yep. bit. It's definitely there. Right. Um, I, re I am kind of surprised because you said that's this is third, third or fourth that this has gone third. Through. Third. Excellent. Yeah. Which is fun to start with that. That neutral barrel. Yeah, because it's just going to amp that. up. Yep. Yeah. And then go to a medium plus tight grain French barrel from Francois Ferrer. Okay. This is a really top notch barrel. Okay. Uh, and this, this is a 2010. This, yeah? Uh, yes. No. Okay. These are, no, these are all 2012. These are all 2012. Okay. I'm sorry. 2012. These are the three wineheads? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it said out on the road. Yeah. <laughs> You can you can tell there's going to be a tasting starting soon. Uh, <laughs> the locals are getting amped up and ready for it. So this barrel is a new barrel, so you're going to get a lot more of that French characteristic here. Oh yeah. And right off the nose, you, you pick up some of that medium toast, but yep. the spice. There's some there's spiciness definitely a lot to that more spiciness to it. Yeah. Spiciness. And it has such a nice long finish. Long finish. You know, especially compared to the last one, it really right. has a lot more carryover. Right. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, I'm, I kind of get a lot, I get more of the fruit, really, yes. which I'm kind of yeah. surprised by. Right, I because thought, two years in a new French yeah, barrel. You thought it would just, I was waiting for kind yeah. of an oak bomb to hit me, and, and it's not, you're still getting a lot of that fruit coming through, so. Yeah, it's, it is, it's good. And then the last barrel we'll try is that um, Hungarian This is the Hungarian one. This will be, this will be fun. Get you up close and personal with the pour here. With so the wine show you some of the color. See if you can get. There's some decent glass staining on there coming off of there as well. So I think you can tell that that's a different. It's a different kind of spice. Different kind of spice, you know, which I think. Like you said, it, it's a different spice. You know, it's not. Oh, it's this typical type of spice, but it's right. definitely different. And I think that'll add uh, complexity. 
to the flavor profile in our in our blends and the barrels. Oh wow! Yeah, that really hit. Now that's a lot more of what I was expecting. Yeah, you know, because that's a lot more. You get a lot more of that woodsy, that grainy kind right. of um, yeah. feel. Yeah, very and, kind and of earthy. Yeah, really. a lot. And so, so now will will all of these be? Um, will you be blending these together? We do. What we do is we will do. A, we will taste every single barrel. We'll, we'll note uh, characteristics for every single barrel, and then we'll do a tasting with our wine consultant. Right okay. Now. It's, and we will pick the best of the best and create our reserve blend. Okay. And then we'll create our two husky Syrah. Okay. So that we will be blending them together. We're gonna it's trial and error. I was gonna say, so it's a lot of it's, it's a full day with a bunch of speakers, speakers and everything else. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. putting together and looking yeah. for just that right Absolutely. mix. Okay. And and we always have believed that our reserve is always different, mm. significantly different. Significantly different, yes. And so we're really trying to have something that's um, really special. We think our Syrahs are great, some of the best in Colorado, and the reserve I think is at the top tier. I am really, thank you for letting me do yeah. this, because this is going to be, I really cannot wait to see, I'm already in my head, I'm yeah. getting this blend me going, going with where, how I would like to taste them out and see how they blend together, so yeah. that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and when, so when will you go to start uh, we'll, doing the blend? We'll bottle in uh, March, April of this year, okay. and we'll release it about this time next year. Next year. So Excellent. we like to have them in the bottle for about a year, mm -hmm. so they really are ready to drink because people don't buy and sell it anymore. Not anymore. They no. buy and drink. They buy and drink, <laughs> yes. There's about 1% that buy and sell it. So, right. again, uh, this is Jeff Eccles with David Bryans. Thank David, you. thank you very much for Absolutely. letting us come in here. All right. Salud. Salud. Salud.